Welcome everyone to another episode of Aussie Tech Heads. It's episode, what are we, 255. And it's coming to you live from the Secret Hub studios. And it's a Thursday night. What is it? The 15th of September. Hello, one and all. You can catch us live.thesecrethub.com if you want to come in and watch us live at around about 7.40. Most nights, most weeks on Thursday nights. Uh, you can Skype in if you've got something to say. You can Skype in on uh, contact Aussie Tech Head. Or you can go around the Twitters and, uh, yeah, do whatever. We'll tell you the Twitter names later on in the show. Uh, also YouTube. So youtube.com forward slash The Secret Hub if you want to watch the video. Okay. Now we've got the usual suspects here again tonight. We've got Eric and Will. Uh, hello, dudes. How yeah. you doing? Hello, William. And hello, Glenn. All right, now this week we've got the, the Google Hangout operating um, exclusively or and, and completely the video and audio. So we're going to see how that goes. Hopefully it'll uh, do us good for the episode. All right. So you let me be the guinea pig for a couple of weeks first, eh? That's right, yes. <laughs> I, I was watching, uh, I was watching the, the TBT on Tuesday night and also live at thesecrethub.com about 7 o'clock, 7.30, 7, 8 o'clock, whatever. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so it, it seemed to go all right. So I thought, well, well, we'll ditch Skype and we'll go for the, the holistic Google Hangout. And we'll, so we'll see how it goes. So if the audio flakes out on, on, the, on us tonight, it's uh, blame Google. Okay. So first of all, uh, yeah, thanks to uh, Tech Webcast. That's the podcast that comes on at 7 o'clock. On the on the Secret Hub channel just before Aussie Tech Heads, and Brad he's got a he, he does some a great deal of interviews, and uh, the one we played tonight had a, a lady called Daria Musk, and it was very interesting. I've never heard of her before, but anyway, he's got he's, he get, he gets interviews with someone every week just about, and it's a very good good uh, listen. Techwebcast.info, and also just want to send my thoughts out to uh, a mate and a listener, uh, Steve. We know you're going through a hard time, mate. So um, all the best, Dave. Eh? Okay, now let's start with some stories. Or has anyone got anything to start off with? Any 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 uh, problems through the week we want to uh, get off our chest? No problems. No problems. That's good. That's good. All right. Well, we'll just start. Oh, yes, I have. I have. I have a tech problem. Oh, I was telling you during the week. But we can we can go through that later if you wish. All right. Okay. Well, we'll go through the the uh, Eric's tech problems later. <laughs> Okay. Well, do you want me to start? I did now that we've become a society who's always expecting everything now, basically, you know, always access. Uh, apparently, delivery companies don't have the same motto. If you're not home, too bad. <laughs> you don't get it. <laughs> you didn't know that. You didn't know that, Will. They leave- I did, but I've I've got waivers. You know, handed them all their waivers saying. You know, just leave it here and blah, 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 blah. And, but some of them still won't do it. And then they – I wouldn't mind so much if there was another way to pick it up. But when the only office in Queensland is in the, at the Brisbane airport, it's like, well <laughs> – Yeah, they all are at the airport. What were you waiting for? Um, my new Android tablet from Dodo. Oh, I see. So how did you – is this – are you buying this one outright or are you going on another plan? No, another plan. Um, Twenty bucks a month. Um, CLTE tablet with the two or three gig of data every month. So. Oh yeah. And what happened? What happened to the old plan? Is that finished? Did it? Or are you just doing two plans? I just paid it out. Oh, After okay. Eight months. I paid it out for twenty bucks. <laughs> oh yeah, that's all right. And so, what are you getting at? Your Pendo Pad version two or something? Basically, it's a. Uh, Better screen. Um, it's got a three megapixel camera. It's got Bluetooth. It's got uh, 3G. It's got uh, GPS. Uh, GPS. So it's just a, a much better version. And what about the screen? Is it a better screen to tap and touch? Slightly touch. higher resolution. Um, but I don't know yet because I haven't got it. So yeah. we shall see. Runs a, a true version of Android 2.2, not a half assed hack like the Pando Pad did. Oh, yeah, nice. Yeah, so. good stuff. Yeah, well, uh, speaking of uh, tabs and tablets and all this sort of stuff, did you see the um, Apple with the with the delayed release of the Samsung Galaxy Tab because of the Apple problems and the copyright patent problems? Uh, Kogan has decided to release the uh, the the similar tablet in Australia anyway. So it's uh, it's the iPad two competitor. It's lighter and with Kogan's pricing, it's actually is cheaper. He the, is he releasing the one that? That is has been banned. Is that what he's done? 
Um, I don't think it's the actual one that's been banned. I think it's his own. Uh, two, it, I think it's his own. It's a US model. Blah, 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 that's, no, I think it's his own. I don't think it's uh, Samsung. I think it's his own sort of thing. I've got a little picture of it, I think. Would that be it? That's the picture that came with the story. The two versions. Oh, my story. Two versions are on offer, and they're the 16 gig Wi-Fi. It's about 4.99, grey or white, and 16 gig Wi-Fi for 6.49, grey or white. Uh, they reckon it'll work fine in Australia with the 3G. And uh, there's a 12 month warranty provided by Kogan. And the important point to note is that apparently they'll pay the freight costs if you need to send the. Oh, it is a Galaxy Tab. He's going to get his pants suit off him. Yeah, the Galaxy tab back to the US to be repaired. So he is. He's, an he's, he's bringing the US. Like he's bringing the US model out. But what was the first thing he was going to bring out that time? And it didn't even come come to fruition. So. But there is no lawsuit against the US model. Yeah, yeah. But but there's a lawsuit about that that tablet being sold in Australia though. That's right. No, there's a lawsuit about Samsung selling that tablet in Australia. Oh, you'd have to be careful. It is Samsung. Well, yeah. He's well, bringing this. Because surely... Yeah, that... but he's not bringing it um, as the company. He's, he's bring, it's not being marketed as... If he's branded at Kogan, but it's a Samsung, Samsung um, guts, then he might get away with it. But if it's got Samsung on the front, he's in a bit of trouble. Yeah. No, because, well, my understanding is that it's only Samsung that isn't allowed to distribute their tablet. And because they manufacture it, theoretically, they're the only ones that can, but it never extended to a third-party distributor. Yeah. Okay, let's go, okay. let's go. Let's go. If they're manufacturing it, they can't distribute it. Fine, I agree with you there. But for Kogan to get his hands on it, that means they, he's getting it from Samsung, which means they're distributing it to him. Mm, that's right. Which means they're... But in the US, they're allowed to in the US. There's no, there's no, ban, no ban on it in the US. They're not allowed to here. Yeah, because otherwise but they're not. Yeah. But you can't. But otherwise, it's not going to be that easy. Because otherwise, someone would just. Or, um, even though there's a ban here and then there's a ban, I think in Germany, and maybe yep. or one other. Um, there's still what Kogan's trying to do is get. He, he thinks there's a loophole, but the lawsuit is against Samsung distributing tablets, uh, selling tablets in Australia, regardless of where it comes. from. But the Samsung's not selling it in Australia. They're selling it to an American company who's distributing it in Australia. Yeah, I, don't, I think that's. I don't think that's right. right. They, he's just, I guarantee you, the American company is Kogan's American company because it's it's his way of doing a little back shuffle. Because if he mm. went from Samsung direct to him, he's he, he, in his mind he knows he's breaking the law. But if he sets up a shell company, and goes, oh, but it's going here first, then it's coming to me. Right. He's breaking the law. So unless there's the, see, unless substance the, over. Yeah, unless the Australian version is going to be different to the the American version, because look, I've just I've just pulled the story up, and it's got uh, Apple's lawyers have delayed the Aussie version of the Samsung Galaxy Tab 10.1, but online retailer Kogan has filled the void by importing the US model. So it is actually the Samsung Galaxy; it's the US model that he is actually importing. And look, I reckon that's um, look, I'd have to. He's just on thin air, thin air. He would be. I reckon he is. I reckon that still could be seen. He's always as been a bit of a thrill, this bloke. This guy, he's a, he's a publicity junkie. Yeah. So, know, I'm better than Harvey Norman. I'm know. better than you. I'm better than this. He's just a bit of a tool. Yeah. So we'll I wait. don't reckon there's anything wrong with that because in the meantime, look how many people are going to be able to buy it. Not the point. The law is the law. Yeah. yeah. Corporations make and break the law all the time. The law yeah. means nothing. And yeah, it's right, and they get fined or get you know whatever they whatever penalties get handed to them. Well, and, you know, so there's they've they've got to abide by it, and and you know, well, look, if this guy doesn't want to abide by it, it's not it's not my gripe. He can do what he wants, I yeah, suppose. Yeah, he'll probably he'll probably sell you know maybe I don't know whatever two million dollars worth, and he'll probably get fined like ten thousand or something. So no, he won't get. His legal fees are going to be two hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, look, I think it. it's right. I don't I don't know. I don't see that it. Look, I, I have to go with you. Eric, I can't yeah, say that's I can right. Getting it rebranded as Kogan. That's the only thing I can think of. No, but it's, it's actually... might be the direct one. It's the guts. Yeah, he's actually bringing it out as Samsung Galaxy Tab anyway. But anyway, let's let's move on to another one of our mates, Harvey Norman. We all, we all, uh, know, <laughs> we all know Harvey Norman, don't we? And he's got this big sale on. 
Uh, now this is not an ad, by the way, <laughs> but it's um, he, he's he's doing two laptops for the price of one. If uh, AMD processing laptops two for the price of one ends on Monday. Are they garbage, are they garbage laptops. No, they're, they're good laptops. They're all basically every brand except Sony or Senyo, something. Yes. Every brand basically something like okay. that. So, so for an example, is we've got here. Um, you get a fifteen point six inch HP Pavilion. Blah blah blah. It's good graphics and nice for hey, eight gig of RAM, seven fifty gig hard drive, Blu Ray player. Blah blah blah. These like bricks. They're about three inches thick. Yeah. So the recommended retail price is fifteen ninety eight. So if you get two. Which obviously you can. You buy one, get one free. It means you're paying seven ninety nine each. You can get it's a. Uh, it sorry. says there. Um, I know this is just a typo. It says you buy one, get one free, but at the top it says limit one per customer. I know. I saw <laughs> yeah, that. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Obviously, limit. You know, limit one, one, one. One uh, special per customer. One special per customer. Yes, yes. right. But what the hell's it matter to them anyway? Uh, that's just that's just to create. You know. Uh, demand, rarity, all that sort of stuff. Uh, yeah, so many of the AMD notebooks on sale are low-powered E350 CPUs. But anyway, you still get the two for the price of one. Uh, the small print, got to read the small print, free laptop must be of equal or lesser value. In the re in the case of return of the original purchase, you must, free laptop must be returned as well. So there you go. Yeah. So if you don't like one, you're obviously going to hate the other one. Well, yeah, yeah that's right. And apparently, what if you just want to return the free one? <laughs> well, if it's uh, if it's not in a resaleable condition, the free one must be purchased at the ticket price. Oh my goodness! No way! <laughs> no way! No oh, it's, way! It's just hard. Well, you know, one hundred months interest free. At, then when you don't pay it, it's a hundred percent per month. Yeah. Well, uh, While we're talking about um, Harvey Norman, see, you know how. Jerry Harvey's engaged in a fierce battle against overseas online retailers, how they should be slugged with import okay. duties and all this sort of stuff. Mm. Well, our dear friend Jerry Harvey is selling a um, is selling a Mactivia Mac Mac yeah, wireless networking device. It's a $300 device. And in combination with a $10 a month subscription to vpnsecure.me, allows Australians to bypass geo-blocking to watch online TV services such as Hulu and Netflix. <laughs> yeah, it's rubbish. There's the box on the screen for those of you who uh, watch the no, video. You know, what, you know this is classic, Will? This is classic. When it suits me, I'll yeah. bypass the, the, the situation and, I, and tough luck, but... When I'm getting hurt by it, I'm going to jump up and down like a petulant child. Yeah. So, so, so since even though Jerry Harvey, Harvey, even since, though Jerry Harvey has said that is now investigating whether a device has breached copyright law in Australia, well, apparently it's a very murky legal area. Oh, it's not that murky, mate. I mean, our, our copyright law here is horrible. Murky because if if we are allowed to watch US TV shows without putting on Hotspot Shield, um and the copyright law was cut and dry, and the licensing was cut and dry, then we'd be watching it. I'm of the opinion that if you give it to me to watch legally, I will legally pay for it. To I watch agree. It. I'm, I'm the same. If you don't, exactly the same. don't legally make it available to me, then I'm going to watch it anyway. That's right. No, I, I agree with you. I agree so, 100%. If you think you, know, you can so, it, I'll watch it. But... Yeah. yeah. What I'm saying is, at the law as it stands, I think this is another one. I think Harvey Norman and Kogan are related. This is another <laughs> one that he, he is bypassing the very strict licensing laws in this country because none of the studios have made any deals with any, um, well, the equivalent of, uh, who's the equivalent of our FCC, the, the TIO, um, mm. to sh watch US shows here unless you're a public broadcaster or a commercial broadcaster and you've bought the shows. Hmm. Yeah, so you and so which is bypassing uh, which is antiquated doesn't make it. <laughs> no, no, I'm not saying I agree with it. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying that this no, is no. Norman that you know when it suits him, he'll he'll mm. bypass the laws as it stands. But I mean, but you, you know, just got to look at our our copyright laws for okay, who's got a TiVo or a Foxtel IQ? Yep, um, they're everywhere. VCRs, they're everywhere, right? Well, okay, maybe not so much now, but our up until 
I think it was about 2000, our copyright legislation changed pre-2000. It was actually illegal to tape any commercial television or any commercial show. So yeah. you could basically record SBS and ABC because they weren't commercial. And then in 2000, they changed the legislation to say that you can record any television show you want for private use, provided that you watch it in its entirety, including the ads, and after you've consumed it once, you must then delete the copy. Hmm. Yeah, so but that's, that, but that's that's all good. That's the, the law catching up. But um, but still, but to circumvent the, like, look, you can't jump on the internet and and go to Netflix dot com or whatever it is and watch a movie from Australia. That's right. So, I tried. Believe me. Yeah. So in you that and everything else so but you it, can with some like if you go to hulu there are some shows you can watch yeah the, the ones that have been licensed that's the ones that have been yeah. allowed but what this guy's yeah. saying is that you pretty much no restrictions which means that you're watching the unlicensed stuff and again i'm not saying i agree with that i'm not saying that we shouldn't be watching it we should be able to watch all that stuff and not wait for channel nine to bring it in you know five years after the event mm. but the point is my point is with harvey harvey norman rather than Rather than the the laws itself, the laws are, are, are ridiculous. But you know he can't cry change the tax laws because it suits me on one hand, and but don't change the licensing laws on the other hand because that doesn't suit me. So he's been selling them <laughs> no, exactly. since June for two hundred ninety nine dollars, and so it says here that you get a free a free trial to a virtual private network service that allows you to mask your IP and overcome the geolocations restrictions. Uh, and he, Mr. Brown, who is part of the Harvey Norman group by the look of it. We are simply selling it as a device that allows you to network your computer and I don't think we've sold one box under proviso of circumventing any network or access to content on whatever. So I guess that's what the same the same spiel would have been rolled out with VCRs. We sell on the video recorder but we're not selling it with the intention anyone record anything. <laughs> you know. Um, yeah, that's like the uh, DVD to, to VCR recorders. Yeah. <laughs> so um yeah, so boo hoo. Boo hoo, Harvey! He's he's had a cry. Um, yeah. all right, where are we off to now? Let's go to. Have you guys got anything you want to well, go on with? I was going to say, speaking, I've got one more retail-related story. Seeing as we're sort of in that area at the moment, um, and this is actually a good thing for once. It's something that'll benefit us. <laughs> good. Um, discount supermarket chain Audi has launched legal proceedings against FPOS, opera, FPOS operator, FPOS Payments Australia Limited, or EPAL, um, in the federal court seeking clarity around the new intercharge fees. So basically, um, they announced plans in March for a new fee structure that would see the merchants charge an extra five cents per transaction. Mm. And... Um, for all point of sale, so p- purchases over fifteen dollars, and an additional one cent payable to ePal itself. So that's six cents per p- transaction. Um, and basically, um, Audi, who already charges you a one percent surcharge on um, Visa fees and things like that, because Visa charges more again. Um, which is why Woolworths stopped using credit. Um, so, but basically, or debit. Audi's had enough, um, and Audi has accused basically because the big four banks have all done it. They're all part of ePal. They're all part of the same conglomerate. So basically, Audi's accused them all of revenue raising. Well, I suppose effectively. That's, what they, that's what they're doing. But I suppose, because I know that the, the banks are all jumping up or whatever, FPOS and all whatever, they're saying, well, you know, there's a lot of transactions going on. We're not getting jacked for it. But um, but they are getting jacked for it. <laughs> they're getting paid. The the, um, the, uh, the the vendor is paying, you know, and all, all these mm. price stories about Visa, MasterCard, et cetera, not making any money. Like, come on, is that real? Give me a break. They're making and money. I guess basically what Audi's saying is, look, okay, sure, it's five cents a transaction. Okay. But let's let's work that out. You know, let's say we get a million customers a year to that particular store. You know, then suddenly that's one. That's a lot of money that 
you're making, but secondly, that's revenue that we have to make somewhere else. Mm. So they're basically saying, although, you know, the fee itself isn't really the problem. It's the fact that, you know, you're making it harder and harder to, for us to keep our fees down. And basically it's unjustified because you're turning over six and a half billion dollars clear profit or whatever it is every year. Um, so why do you suddenly claim you need more money? <laughs> yeah, well, I think because what the credit cards when you run something through your your FPOS machine, you know, in your shop or whatever, well, you're charged a percentage of the sale anyway from a, whatever from what one point five percent to five to five percent, uh, depending on how much the sale is and your turnover. So, and then it's more with diners and Amex. It's ridiculous. Yeah. The so I know, cost. look, I know um, the, when this story came out a little while ago, I think we were speaking about. I know there were arguments too and. Uh, for and against i can't actually remember what they were but um but yeah i don't see why we should have another five cent charge they 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 spun it around in you know some way that they they said it was going to uh going to benefit the consumer oh i don't know why <laughs> i don't know why. but see don't forget it they're not saying it's a, a five cent um fee it's an, an additional five cents so if it's already 10, that's going to make it 15. Mm. You know? And for somebody like us, I mean, okay, Audi is a, a bigger corporation, but us, for example, you know, Battery Central, we're a small business. And as it is, for we have a mobile FPOS um, machine. And as it is, it's only just making it feasible to have. You know, like it costs that much to rent that machine and to pay for the transactions on that machine yeah. um, that, you know, you've got to start wondering, is it worth having? And so if these fees go up, then, you know, yeah, that's you'd what, get yeah. rid of the machine yeah. at cost, but then you inconvenience your customers because you've got to make them go to a bank or go to an ATM to get cash to buy a battery. So Look, all these, everyone, everyone's <laughs> trying to improve their bottom line and it can only be, be improved so much. And they just, every, the only people that get screwed are the people at the bottom and that's us. All right, let's move on. Let's move on. No, man, I'm the one doing the screwing. Oh, is it you, is it? <laughs> We've got to hey, blame mate. you. All right. <laughs> All right, Call so me. I'll tell you, I'll tell you, you want to you want to enter a competition. It's an easy competition. It's a APC magazine's got this competition. Um, the magazine launched in 1981. That's a long time ago for a PC magazine. That's uh what's that 30 years? Must be must be a birthday thing anyway. But anyway, um it's uh it's starting apparently starting a new how to sec this is only info only that's that's no ad or anything like that it's info only so it's starting a new how to section and it wants to showcase the most useful tips on the key software products that people use today they don't want long tutorials just good little quick tips now you can go to their website apcmag.com and it's slash adobe hyphen hot hyphen hyphen tips dot htm go to the show notes have a link from there uh and what you can win you the top five entrants from australia and new zealand are eligible for some of the most the most uh sought after adobe software packages total price pool 13 grand including the cs 5.5 master collection so that'd be all right ends on september the 30th so if you've got a little photoshop tip or a flash tip or something yeah i'd be i'd be entering that that'd be that'd be a good get that'd be a good go wouldn't it Look, I've got a picture of the Adobe Suite somewhere. There. there is a lot of software there. Thirteen, the whole price pool. Thirteen. What's the Adobe Suite worth? It must be worth about five grand. Uh, yeah, retail. Yeah. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, it's bloody crazy. Crazy. All right. Well, what we're going to do now is, I think, uh, we're going to have a little break in proceedings. We're going to be back because we're going to going to try and swap back to Skype. I think. Okay. So we'll be back in a sec. Okay, record. Let's see if we get it right this time. Stupid. One, two, one, two, one, two. Oh, there we go. And welcome back, everyone. Thanks for sticking with us. We're back on the Skype with the video on the Hangout, and we're, we're away again, away again. Now, Eric, he's our resident audible.com person who uh, who is who subscribe has subscribed to audible.com for a while i believe and has downloaded many how many a year 
Many years. Many years. Yes, that's what I thought. That's what I thought. And uh, so you've, you uh, listen to books all the time. At audible.com, you can get your free book from aussietechheads.com.au website. Click on the link there. Go and get a free book. You may like to get the one Eric's going to talk about right now. Uh, which one are you going to talk about, Eric? I've got one. It's called Dark Market, Cyber Thieves, Cyber Thieves, Cyber Cops and You. Hmm. Piqued have- your interest, people? And what's all that about? Let's get off break, and I'll come back after the break and tell you all about it. No, I'll tell you about it. <laughs> You're doing a little Eddie Maguire. Yeah, yeah that's right. <laughs> we'll find out the winner after this break. That's right. We'll find out all about it after this break. All that's right. right. Yeah. And during the break, someone will smash me over the face with a glass. <laughs> yeah. um, it's for being a tool. Now, here we go. The publisher's summary, then I'll play a grab. The benefits of living in a digital, globalized society are enormous. So, too, are the dangers. The world has become a law enforcer's nightmare in every criminal's dream. Hmm. Interesting. What's the What's the book called again? Sorry, Eric. It's called. Yeah. It's called Dark Market: Cyber Thieves, Cyber Cops, Cyber Cops, Cyber Cops, Cyber Cops, Cyber Cops, Cyber Cops, Cyber Cyber Cops, Cyber Cops, Cyber Cops, Cyber Cops, Cyber Cops, Cyber Cops, Cyber cops and you. Dark market. All right. Now you got a little audio grab. Uh, yes, I do have an audio grab, and I will play that for you right now. We now find ourselves in a situation where this minuscule elite, call them geeks, technos, hackers, coders, securocrats, or what you will has a profound understanding of a technology that every day directs our lives more intensively and extensively, while most of the rest of us understand absolutely zip about it. I had first begun to appreciate the significance of this when researching my previous book on global organized crime, McMafia. I traveled to Brazil in order to investigate cybercrime because this absorbing country is, among its many positive qualities, a major center of bad stuff on the web though this was little known at the time. Here, I met cyber thieves who had engineered a spectacularly successful phishing scam. Phishing remains one of the most dependable pillars of criminality on the Internet. There are two simple variants. The victim opens a spam email. The attachment may contain a virus, which enables a computer somewhere else in the world to monitor all activity on the affected computer, including the input of bank passwords. Hmm. There you go. Interesting. So he goes through um, what goes on in the deep dark world that we know as the internet, yes. and how the scams work, what they do, how to watch oh. out for them. Um, I think it'd be a good read for all the ignoramuses out there, and, and um, no one listening to this show is that. No. We might not few that are. Yeah. So uh, yes. Yeah, so that sounds like a very interesting listen. Do you say listen mm. or read? Listen. Sounds like an interesting it's listen. Read. Yeah. Um, Nine hours and 31 minutes, just released today. Oh, nice work. Nice just work. Released. And so you can, you can get that one as your free book. If you click on the link on the aussietechheads.com.au webpage, see right down the bottom there, click on that, sign up, and you get that one for free. Good on you, Eric. Thanks for that. No problem. All right. Now, moving on, moving on. Uh, we've got another couple of stories. Oh, look, we've got to talk about Windows 8. All right. Windows Windows 8. Has been, what would you say? Not un- unveiled. Would you say unveiled? It has a sneak preview. You, you had a sneak preview. I've got it installed. And how's it work? I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Oh, you know what it is. I think it. Look, it's not. I, I. I. I jest. It's not too bad. I think, like Microsoft, they fall down in the design. It's never as pretty as Apple. Yeah. But it works quite well um it's um you know when you press the you know now you press the microsoft key on your keyboard yeah and you start um menu yep well when you do that now you get the start screen nice big screen comes up it's it's made for tablets this thing is made for tablets yeah and on that screen you can click you know twitter and your weather and the news or the stock reports or right you know whatever else yeah and then there's a little Little, uh, what do they call it? A tile. I think they call it tiles. Yeah, there they go, like that. Yeah. And you just click on your desktop down the bottom right hand corner there, and it takes you back to your normal desktop. And it looks exactly like Windows 7 at the back end. 
Right. No right. diff. The GUI at the front end is um, it's made for touchscreen. So yep. on a tablet, this thing, I think, will do okay, providing that the guts of it isn't heavy. You yes. know, because Microsoft have got a bad habit, except for Windows Seven, and let's hope they're learning from that. They've got a habit of really just making it clunky. Yeah. So well, I can't. It's well, it can't be clunky. It's going to go on tablets. So so it's the yeah. same version, it's not, is it? Soft gear, though, mate. <laughs> so you put the same version on a PC as on a tablet. Is that what you? They're on both. Yeah, I've got it. I put it on a um, Dell netbook. Yes. That's uh, two years old. It's got uh, one gig of RAM. Yep. It's got dual, uh, what is it, a dual core processor, so two cores only. And, uh, yeah, so it, it, so it runs on old computers, and, it, and it's pretty nippy. It's still, you know, on a, on a brand new spanking computer, this thing would fly. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah. So Microsoft's been eager to get independent developers to work, to um, developers work on applications for Windows 8, and it's apparently given away 5,000, uh, to 5,000 attendees to this conference that was held just recently in uh, Southern California, 5,000 um, thingos, tablet computers. Yeah, that's what I would, I would like to get a hold of one of those. It'd be nice. Yeah, it would be, wouldn't it? So they, they stress mm. it is a pre-release product, so that's probably why it's not working as well as probably should oh, be. Oh, yeah, look, you look, I wouldn't expect it to perform miracles, but for, for a pre-release product, and this, let's face it, this thing's not going to be released, I think, until sometime next year. Um, yeah. It's not bad. It's pretty close to finish, I reckon. Yeah. They'll probably just work on some of the back end stuff and making it faster, less clunky, or you know, no funny libraries or you know, ed, uh, registry bullshit that they tend to do. Is the registry but, uh, still there? Oh, yeah. It's all, it's everything's still <laughs> the there. The front end is, is, changed. is completely redesigned. And this is but the... I'm sure the back end had to be redesigned to make that front end work or work properly. Yes. Yeah. And, um, and uh, sorry, I just lost my train of thought. Hang Tell you on, what, they were, it took me. Uh, it was they, their servers got hammered yesterday. I think they downloaded five hundred thousand copies in twelve hours or something. Yeah, okay, right, that's massive. But I, I downloaded it last night at about um, nine o'clock, and four gig file took twenty minutes. Yeah, that's all right. <laughs> yeah, bad. yeah, that's pretty good. Uh, Will, have you had anything to do with um, Windows eight? Uh, I looked at it, and I know it's available for download. Yeah, Although one thing I have to, I'll, I'm curious about is when you look in the the list of the other ones uh, in the developers release, there's only 32 and 64 bit. But when you have a look in the other ones, there's 128 bit. Hmm. So I'd be curious to see what that's all about. That's probably for the tablet, I'd say. Yeah, so well, Windows eight, so it's um, it's yeah, it's so available for download. I know Brad, one of our listeners, he's um, he's he's apparently downloaded, put it on. So I wonder how he went with it. Uh, okay, so what else have we got going on? Microsoft, we've done that. Uh, what about Qantas? I got a couple. I got a little Qantas story here. Uh, Qantas, oh, do you want to hear a Qantas story? Story. <laughs> All right, I can do that. Uh, Qantas will next month start trialing an application called Q Streaming, always with a Q. Uh, which allows people to download movies and other content to iPads on one of its Boeing 767s. The airline will initially provide iPads to all 254 passengers uh, on the plane, but officials hope ultimately to enable people to connect using their own Wi-Fi device. They are all looking at people. They also looking at allowing people to keep a movie on their device for 24 hours after uh, before it's deleted itself. And Qantas will continue to roll out the you know the back of seat screens and video on demand in its new planes, but hopes that this new uh, Q-Streaming will provide the same service for planes not kitted out with wide systems. So the service was going to be provided free of charge. Now that's um, handy. So basically, any, you're on a plane, you want to watch a movie, and the movies are free, except yep. uh, except if you're on Virgin or Jetstar. Yeah, um, you whip out, yeah. And a Qantas plane, you want to watch a movie, the plane's about to land, take it with you, finish it when you get home. That's, that's right, cool. exactly that's right. right. As long as you watch it within what, 24 hours or something, um, said Qantas is not concerned about the pilfering of the iPads because they would be locked to the aircraft system and, yeah. use, and useless outside of the plane. Oh, someone will crack that. There's no way. Yeah, I know. I, I wouldn't be putting me... How dumb are they to think that there's not smart people out there going, oh, beauty-free iPad, oh, but you won't be able to use it. Bullshit. Yeah, yeah. Yes, you will. <laughs> <laughs> but you, you'd just take it just to see, wouldn't you? 
Yeah, like, of course. Like, you go, oh, an iPad, cool, I'll just take it and I'll... I'll, I'll think, what's the worst that like can happen? I'll dump it. The, old, uh, the, the E... Earphones. You used to pay five dollars, and you'd get two dollars back if you returned them. You know. Yeah, <laughs> and it's also apparently Qantas is set to unveil a major end user uh, computing blueprint that will allow up to thirty-five thousand workers to connect their own devices to the corporate network. So this BYO program is part of a broader push at the at Qantas's Qantas's dream or vision to unshackle staff from the company desktops, starting from the first half next year. So there you go. They're saving money mm-hmm. everywhere except for the bill for the CEO's salary. That's right. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. All right. What else have we got going? I've got to uh, oh, delete that Microsoft Windows 8 story because we did that. Um, i got one about Apple bans an app that shows the ugly side of electronics. Did oh, we, I didn't see that. Did we see this one? This is a little game. I've got a little graphic there. Uh, the creators of, a, of an app called Phone Story describes it as a game that attempts to provoke a critical reflection on its own technological platform. So apparently the, what happens is the game's all about, um, uh, it shows you, you know, you go and dig up the minerals, then you go and get, a, get yourself made, get the plastic made for the phone, where, you know, and people are killing themselves over in the Foxconn factory and all this sort of stuff. According to developers, the website, the game involves a player in cartoon versions of real-world scenarios. Uh, as I just said, involving mining in the Congo, the reported suicides of workers, blah, blah, blah. Now, Paolo Pedersini, the game's Italian developer, posted a blog on his Twitter feed Tuesday announcing the app has been pulled under the header Phone Story RIP 13911 to 13911. So why would... Um, does Apple... like they, they would have initially been approved. Is this right? For Apple yeah, well, it sounds like. If it got through the App Store, yeah, it would have been initially approved. Yeah, uh, he said that uh, sections of his guidelines that ban apps that depict violence or abuse towards children, excessively objectionable or crude content, or paid apps that solicit donations uh, to causes. The game's website says proceeds go to workers' groups and other non-profit organisations. Well, that's all right. The game is still available in the Android market for a buck. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's still there. It's still in the Android market oh, if you want it. It's cool. I'll download it now. Phone story. I'll see what it's like. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, oh, it's a dollar will. Might be pus. No, no, I'm not paying that. No. <laughs> not paying a buck. What's a dollar? I don't buy stuff. <laughs> How can you? You'd have to if you're going to download it. Anyway, I don't want to know. And uh, what else have we got? I download it. <laughs> you what? If it's in the Amazon Amazon store because you can play them for free online. Oh yeah, radio. And uh, what about Westfield? Did you see the story in the in the news this week? Westfield and their car parking uh, scandal, schmozzle, privacy breaching, and and oh, big crybabies. Westfield has temporarily pulled "Find My Car" from its iPhone app uh, after a security analysis showed he could monitor all cars parked in the Bondi Junction shopping centre. There you go. So that's a that's that's pretty bad. Uh, the app lets a shopper enter their number plate. And after choosing a photo of their car from four displayed vehicles, seeks to guide the shopper back to their parking bay. Hundreds of small resolution cameras place about two parking bays apart, snap car images and number plate details, um, which are then made available to shoppers via the app when they want to relocate their car and leave. Westfield said it did not believe the app had breached personal privacy as number plates were not personal information. I don't know, but maybe displaying them, your, per, your personal number plate around the place might have been. But in terms of privacy, the application does not contravene the Privacy Act, blah, blah, blah. They're trying to, you know, just another spin getting out of it. And it probably, it's probably all legal. It's probably fair enough. But uh, it's not right. That's why they pulled it. Uh, blah, 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 blah. It does not facilitate blah, blah. So, yeah, so he's uh, this guy. He was apparently just, I don't know. Apparently you could access these number plates and the images from a public URLs. So, um, yeah, no good. Yeah. So they pulled that, and uh, better luck next time to Westfield. Yeah. Now, now, I've got a story that everyone missed, or did, or did I miss it because I was away somewhere? No, no, I listened to the podcast. Um, this was, this happened um, the week, I think, of the 1st of September, so a couple of weeks ago. Yes. That, that game, you know, L.A. Noir. Remember that game? It was a massive big deal. Yeah, heard of it. Yeah, heard of it. Yeah, I think we spoke about it. Massive the States. They sold out. Yeah. And um, it was an Aussie developer, Team Bondi. Do you remember that? 
Yeah. Oh, cool. Yep. Will, do you remember this? Talk. Yes. We yeah. talked about it. Yeah. Yep. Oh, you did talk about it, that they, sh- that they went broke. Yep. But they go when broke. did you talk about that? Thought it would talk about it on TBT, maybe. I remember may... talking about it anyway. <laughs> oh, we'll go again, uh, Eric. So what was no, no, that's all right. I just thought that, you know, as a passing thing, you know, um, you know, they put it's their real estate. They're really they're... good. They were, they, they were a good company. Yeah, right. Oh, okay. Were. They were, yeah. So what was they the gist were. of it, just for people who don't know, anyway? They... Well, no, no details. They just shut their doors, place in administration. Very next day, the ad for the... Um, the commercial the office space is up for a you know yeah, for right. lease. Yep. Um, I, th- I think I know why they went broke. Their office space was three thousand three hundred square meters. Jeez, it's three quarters of an acre. It was a, it was a warehouse in the in the boondocks of somewhere in, in an industrial state. They'll pay virtually nothing. No, it wasn't that in, far, uh, mate. It was in Ultimo, which is five minutes from Chinatown, which is five minutes from Sydney. Yeah, right. Three, that, well, that would have been pretty good Paris, rent then. Optimo Piermont, which is on the water. They would have paid a pretty Paris penny for this paying, property. I don't know. I heard they weren't paying much for it, but there was some one of the people who founded the company owned it or somebody thing. Yeah, right. Yeah. Well, all right. Well, you know what time <laughs> it is? We all know what well, time. I, know, I, think, I think I know what time this is. We all know what time it is because it's the time of the show. Where we get we open the little box, and uh, we 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 get the head out. So uh, the head, it's, it's over to you. Okay, so the head the head's back. Ask the head at Aussie only at Aussie Tech Heads uh, dot com dot au. Now the head's got some questions this week. Oh, good God, you! Look. <laughs> hey, I think the head gets worse every week. Oh, <laughs> I'm good. anyone that read that? I think the head gets worse every week, but you know he's got a ve- very malle- malleable head by the by the sounds of it or by the looks of it because it, it changes shape every week. But anyway, he got an itchy head too, itchy head. Um, anyway, so I got a, got another three. The head's pulled another three uh, emails, and for for us to have a bit of a chat about Mullins, 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 is that your real name, Mullins from Kilmore? He can't play media files on his PC, so that's bad luck. <laughs> See you next question. Next question. <laughs> Get an apple. I know. Buy a Mac. Yeah. No, 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 no. <laughs> the head wouldn't be so wouldn't be so uh, uh, cruel. Mean, yeah, mean and disparaging and uh, and down looking <laughs> on on Mullins. I'm sorry, that's Mullins. What, that's, yeah. that's what makes your head so satisfying. What you have to do. A satisfying head will. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> what do you, what do you have to do, Mullins? Is if you're not playing, it depends on what sort of not playing status you're at. But uh, newly formatted PCs, say, or machines that you say you've put a DVD in and you can't play it, or you've you've downloaded an MP4 from the internet and you can't play it, or whatever, you know, and it says uh, can't play this file, unrecognized file. What you got to do is you got to probably you're missing a codec. Now, codec stands for compression decompression. Uh, it shrinks large movie files and makes them playable on your computer. Hundreds of codecs out there, and uh, you got to get the there's codecs for audio and video, and you got to have the right one. You got to have the right codec on your machine that was used to say encode the video in the first place. And if you haven't got it, well, you're stuffed. You can't play it. So thankfully, there's a uh, codec guide. Go to codecguide.com, C-O-D-E-C-G-U-I-D-E.com, and download. You'll find the K-Lite Mega Pack. That's the one the head uses. Go there, download that, install that, and um, the Mega Pack, and you should be right. If you're on a 64-bit version of Windows, you download the 32-bit, install the 32-bit, and you also install the uh, 64-bit, and and you should be you should be good. All right, I hope that one helps you. Let me know if it doesn't. Now, next question, Jess from Mulumba. Hello, Jess. Head, love the show. Blah blah blah. What is the best conferencing software? Well, we were using uh, Hangout tonight, Google Hangout. You could use that to conference with up to 10 people, I believe. And uh, so uh, you could use that. You could use Skype, but uh, Skype's pretty much one-on-one with video. Uh, if you go to more than one video, we found it a bit, mm, bit shaky. Didn't work really good. Thank goodness for the Hangout. That that helped us, saved us. Uh, what else? Did they come oh, the right time, didn't it? Sorry, Will. So they come along just at the right time. 
it did. It, it actually did. It, it, it did. It was good. Um, so, yeah, so that's probably the Uvu. main two. The main two. So, yeah. Uvu, rather often. Yeah, Uvu, that's another good one. Uh, but that's I would... Cross platform, too, so... Oh, yes, yes. Ah, oh, she didn't say, Jess, you didn't say what, what you were using, but, uh, well, Skype's Mac as well, and Hangouts Mac because it's browser based, so, yeah, that's all right. And they work on your mobile devices. Yeah, that's right. Well, Hangout doesn't, but. Yeah, and I'm sure there's others out there. What's that one for? There's one for the Mac i i site or something? Uh, I, uh, Face- yeah, it's FaceTime, but God knows how to use that. Head doesn't, that, head doesn't understand <laughs> that one either. So if head the head doesn't, doesn't face. <laughs> if the head doesn't understand, <laughs> you got no chance. No one understands. <laughs> All right, I chat. That's right. Thanks, Frosty. Thanks, Frosty, in the lounge. We got a very intelligent lounge, almost as intelligent as the head. All right. Um, now Wally from Birdsville. Oh, that's where they have the races, I think, out there, Birdsville. Is that right? Birdsville races some some camel yeah, race or something. Up. Pardon? That's yeah, that's him. And uh, by race. Yeah, what is the best live stream services? All right, these, these are very quick and sort of... So the head tries to get the same sort of type of questions every week. So um, what is the best live stream service? Well, we use here at Aussie Tech Heads, we, at the moment we're using livestream.com. That's pretty good. You set the back end up like a TV station or whatever. You know, you can have the videos running 24-7 and uh, all that sort of stuff. And so that's pretty good. Live stream is good. Uh, Justin TV. We used to use Justin. T- no, we didn't. We used to use UStream. We used to use UStream. That's still, Ustream. yeah, that's still pretty good. That still works. Jack uh, um, yeah. Justin TV. Yeah, Justin TV. Not bad. Justin uh, TV. Uh, Stickem is another good one. Stickem. Bit Gravity. Oh, I think Bit Gravity is a paid service. I'm just checking that now. Yeah, I think you might be right. I think that has moved into um, paid servicing. Uh, but yeah, Justin TV, UStream, or Livestream, man. Just uh, follow those from it with a dot com, I guess, or Google them. But uh, look, we use live stream at the moment. I was out. I was, I was out on the. Uh, what was that, Will? Sorry. If I was just looking this up. Video, we're going to take a look at BG um, Live. Sure, sure. Go away. Um, I was just looking at uh, Bit Gravity. Bit Gravity. Their plans start at uh, five hundred and forty-five dollars a month. Oh what? <laughs> oh, that's too. That's crazy. The, oh geez, the, the head. The, the head. Man, out of that, Will. The head can't afford that. Head's not doing that. <laughs> Five hundred and forty bucks. You're kidding me, aren't you? Yeah, but how much do you get for that? Two, two, um, two meg. <laughs> Telstra prices. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> All right, and uh, so yeah, look, look, look. I had a problem with live stream. I went out and about, and I tried to stream through live stream on the weekend, and it wouldn't pick up the audio. I was using a audio USB device. And for some unknown reason, it took me three hours to work it out. It still didn't work it out. So I went over to Ustream and it connected straight away. So obviously there's limitations with probably everything you try. But anyway, live stream is probably the one to go with um, Wally. Wally from Birdsville. So thanks to everyone for those questions. And you can send, send your questions to on Twitter at AskTheHead or you can ask the head at AussieTechHeads.com.au. All right. Hey, uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Mr. Head. Richard, yeah. is it? No, 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 just head. Just head, yep. not Richard Head. No, no, that's me brother. Um, you get a lot of you get a lot of out of town letters. Yeah, I know. We actually get more than just three a week, but I just collate the ones that I think are interesting in the same style. And, you pick uh, the out of town ones because they got no bandwidth. Is that right? That's right. <laughs> and then <laughs> and then and then they can't tell if I'm telling the truth or not. Right. They, they can't catch say, me out. Download Windows 8. I'll see you next year. <laughs> that's right. Four gigs over dial-up. That'll take a God knows how long. Yeah, that's right. No, but that's good. That's, that's good that we're getting a bit of a bit of a, a uh, response from all around the country. We haven't had any yes. overseas ones yet, but maybe maybe we should get some of those pretty soon. So if you're overseas, ask the head a question, please. All right. Okay. Now, uh, have we got anything to move on with Eric or Will? Bye, head. <laughs> <laughs> A story on um, says this is the headline. Have you found yourself watching TV while talking on the phone and checking your emails? Already distracted reading that sentence? Well, you're not alone. So it's saying basically saying is surfing the web is turning our brains to mush. Oh, I don't think so. It's keeping your brain moving, isn't it? Watching TV. Well, there's arguments to and from. No, I don't think it is turning it to mush. What it's doing. Is that at the people's and these are they've proven is that the attention span is, is less. 
people can't sit and just read a book now. Yes. They've got to be checking emails. They've got to, it's constantly multitasking. Mm. Um, well, your brain's working. It's actually working harder because you're doing a lot of things. And, you know, and you, you know, when you search, you don't, you know, like you're, I'm watching TV. You go, I haven't seen that actor for a while. What's her name again? And then I'll yeah. look up the credits yeah. on the current show. I'll look up, you know, who stars in this show. You can you go to imdb.com, you know, the Internet Movie Database. Yes. And you top up the show that you're watching. And usually a lot of the time that episode's already on there because we get the episodes late. Yes. I go, yeah. oh, who started that show? Then I'll do a research on her and go, oh, that's what her name yeah. was. Oh, that's right. She's been on all these other shows. Blah, blah, blah. So you – so. It's making us smarter in the sense that we're finding out more information about a lot of different things. That's complimenting, that we wouldn't. yes. Because otherwise you just go to, I'm not going to the library to find out about, you know, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah. Um, but our, people, our attention span is a lot less because that would have taken me five minutes. Mm. And I'm going on to something else for five minutes and something else for five minutes and the kids want me enough, you know, so. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Like I've got the iPad next to me when I watch the TV, and I'm, I'm I often, yeah, just go, oh, what's this episode, and who's this, and are they still alive, yeah, and all it. this it's sort of stuff. I love it. I, I get so wrapped up into that. Sometimes that's more interesting than the show itself. Yeah, yeah, that's right. But I'll tell you something else that's um that was, that's a bit crazy as, and I don't know, you probably don't find it as much, but I actually uh, had to write probably five or six paragraphs out when I was at work the other day. I had to write, write them in handwriting. Like, and like handwriting? Well, I printed. Because I actually, yeah. I've, I've lost the ability to write. Hang on, you used an implement that you placed in your hand between your forefinger and your middle finger and wrote or on thumb. a piece of paper. Yeah, forefinger and thumb. Oh. You it? fool! Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. So, um, yeah, and I actually started cramping up. And I oh, thought, you do? Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Yeah. So you cramp up, Will? You've had that sensation? Well, are you talking about his no, hand no. now? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Will, Will's, hands, hand. Will's hands cramp up all the time, <laughs> but not from writing. I can't even do um, script anymore. <laughs> I'm not out of practice. Is that, that's running writing? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I know. Like, I print. I, 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 yeah. <laughs> I know. It's crazy. But anyway, that's just the way of the world because everyone's just typing all the time. But um, but anyway, who uses shorthand? Is that still going? I wonder. I wonder if shorthand. Oh yeah, my secretary, who's 135, yeah. uses shorthand. <laughs> is she fast? No, actually, shorthand's still still taught. It's actually still quite commonplace for secretaries and receptionists and stuff. I think um, journos still use it mm-hmm. pretty regularly. Yep. Yes, yeah, so I think that's you can still take a shorthand job. course. I I tried to learn it once and nah. Mm. <laughs> There's too much going on on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. Well, that's right. Too big. Well, everyone's just touching. It's going to be too hard to type soon because everyone just yeah, be... we're getting very lazy. I try to write when I can. Mm. I don't go and say, "Righto, today I'm going to have some writing time." Don't bother me. Nothing yeah. like that. But if I see a client, <laughs> oh, I'll you... go in a pen and paper. And oh write. yeah, I st- I still do that. Like you know, you can't see that, but I, like you write obviously on your on your mm. and you write on your stuff. But this was just like a it was a narrative. It was a six paragraph. Yeah. I had to take well, that's the thing. If I had to write more than, well, let's let's. What are the page sizes? A4 these days. If I, yeah. if someone said to me like when you're at school or at or at university, I said, right, oh, you've got a 500 word essay. Yeah. Let's say in your dreams, yeah. buddy. Well, this was this was probably three quarters of an A4. I had to take someone's statement, and it was just too much. And what were you playing? Were you playing police or something? Were you? <laughs> that sounds like it, doesn't it? Yeah, I was out playing police. I've taken statements all over the place. Yeah, just for no reason. <laughs> yeah, just down the shops. <laughs> kind of a statement. Yeah, no worries. <laughs> yeah, no worries. All no, right. Oh, yeah, you're wearing. Yeah, that's right. Uh, yeah, so we got any more stories? Because I think we might be uh, we might be cooked. We cooked? Um, there was, well, you know, um, oh, the only other thing that was, well, is actually too quickly. One is that Google uh, has just bought another thousand Patents from IBM. Yeah, right. Uh, and these are mostly, they're quite weird. They're a little um, hardware patents, but there's some quite amazing, um, just little technical details that, that you wouldn't even think of. Um, just, oh, yeah. IBM um, have got thousands and thousands and thousands of patents. They've got, they've got something like 70,000 patents. So, what, what yeah. sort of money do they and, pay for these thousands? Uh, I don't know. I didn't read that far into it, but 
they basically, yeah, bought a thousand patents off IBM and things like, um, let's see, method method and apparatus for achieving uniform data distribution in a parallel database system. Oh my god! Um, Sounds like you know, what? Like, a, like an Oracle slash database that's on a RAID one configuration? Is that what that's about? Yeah. Method for forming resistors. Um, you know, object oriented programming system with objects for dynamically connecting functioning programming objects with objects for general purpose operations. Oh, so you know what I reckon? Specific- They're going to use this for manufacturing. They're going to make something. Yeah. Well, you wouldn't buy it unless you wanted it. Well, un- yeah, yeah, that's makes- right. That's right. Yeah, or leverage for something or other. But, uh, but yeah. speaking of raids and stuff, Eric, now you, you got a story about. Oh, jeez, mate, raid. Raid, raid, <laughs> rage, did you say? <laughs> <laughs> raid against the machine. During the week, I've, I've been doing a little bit of research, probably should have done more, on getting a NAS for at home. And I stumbled across this one, an iOmega one, which is now owned by EMC, who are, you know, fairly well-known storage company, high-end storage company. And I think iOmega is now one of their subsidiaries. And I saw their NAS... I liked it, 4 terabyte, RAID 1 or RAID 0, whatever you like. I've kept it at RAID 1. <coughs> Excuse me. So I went and bought it, ordered it, got it delivered, two days. Came came, came from, uh, I think it might have come from Brisbane, actually. Oh, yeah. And I, you know, I read the instructions, you know, like I normally don't, but I thought this is a, a piece of hardware that's, if it doesn't work, I'm screwed. Yes. Um, read the instructions, plugged it in, put the put the software in, Nothing. Mm. Dead. And nothing, and nothing happened. Couldn't see anything. And it was the cloud version? That's the cloud version. <laughs> uh, yes. Yeah, cloud my backside. <laughs> um, because it was easy to set up, wasn't it? Well, it wasn't easy. <laughs> well, I didn't get it set up. I rang support and they rang me back and they, they gave them the SIM. They said, look, that's dead on arrival, mate. We'll replace it. Get, oh, get you a new one. And I said, um, what? Long, I said mate, how long is this going to take? And he said, oh, look, I'll see if we've got any in stock. And if we haven't, I'll order one for you and we'll be early next week. I said, sweet. Um, can I come and pick it up and drop this one off? He goes, yeah, we're, we're down at Botany. Where are you? I said, oh, well, you know, again, they're near the airport, right? Yeah. So, which is a bit of a pain. So I thought, oh, well, I can drive down there. That's fine. And he said, oh, can you have a look if you've got one there now? They didn't have one, so they're going to order it for me. I'll go and pick it up next week. Oh. But the whole the thing was just – and I kept reading about it. and There were so good. many good reviews about this particular one. The store center cloud, cloud edition, mm. uh, four terabyte thing. So many good reviews that I thought, I've got to just get one. How how can I, how can it now, be DOA though? That's the thing. No idea. I think the hard drives must have been fried or something. I, you know what? I suspect because it, well, I got it delivered from um, Brisbane. I reckon it was chucked around in the truck. Really? In the, dislodged the hard drive or something. I don't know. Oh. But the box looked the box looked pretty natty when I got it. Yeah, looked okay. like it, it was a re, it was a previous one that had been returned, and they, Ooh, you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, that's no good. Yeah, yeah so, so so you you haven't got it set up yet, then. So no, well, okay. cut a long story short. I wanted to get two, <laughs> yeah. right? But I thought, no, yeah. don't be a dickhead. Get one because yeah. what I was because what they can do is they can talk to one another. Supposedly. <laughs> no, yeah, supposedly. Yeah. So you put one at home, and you I can put one in my office. And the office one I back up at home, and the work off and the home one I can back up at the office. You know, so you yeah. can have you've got a, two cloud systems. If one goes down, the other one, and it's still at the other place. Yeah. So I thought, no, I won't get that's you know it's get pretty expensive. But I thought, you know what, I'm d- dying to get this thing working. So I went down to Harris Technology today, Good old and, Harris. Bought an, and bought another one. Right. right. So I'm crossing my fingers. So what about the one that's still coming? So oh, no, I'll get the replace. I'll pick that up next week, and I'll. Throw that one in the office. So you're in for two, no matter what. In for two, no matter what. Oh. So got this one, but this one, screaming like a dream. Yeah. So it was. So it wasn't. It was very hard. It wasn't that easy. To, it wasn't that hard to set up. It was. It was just that uh, that one was a piece of crap, dead on arrival. That I was doing everything. I thought it can't be this hard. How can it be this hard? Yeah, it should just plugged in. And it just went in, and, and right off the drives were all there. The you know, add a share, blah blah blah. YouTube configuration, etc., etc., etc. Now, now why? Um, now, did you did you do research, or you sort of jumped in? Did you say, oh, could, what was? No, that? I did do research. I what was after I bought the first one and it didn't work. I was saying to myself, maybe I should have done more research. Mm. 
What about? But I read um, so many good reviews about this one. Why did you particularly choose that one instead of say the Drobo or something similar? Well, Drobo was three times the price. Fair enough. Yep. Number one. Um, yep. This one is a cloud edition, which you can access um, from anywhere. And right. to prove that, I thought, well, okay, I've got it attached to my home network on the cable um, internet connection. Yep. And my rig now is connected to the ADSL completely off the network. Right. But yep. I, I, can, I can access the cloud and drop files into it from this rig right now. Right. So, and, and why didn't you go to something like the Windows Home Server or, say, Mac Mini Server or something like that? Uh, Mac Mini Server doesn't do cloud. Right. Um, that's the main reason. Yep. This one allows me to back up my office documents. Yeah, so you pretty much and just... My, you and just, my home documents to the office. Yeah, so you pretty much just want a turnkey plug and play... Yeah, pretty um, much. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, oh, that's good. That's good. So you got one going, the Cloud Edition. Is it the iX2200? That's the one, the one you had on screen there. And yeah. it's, uh, it's it's not bad. Um, I, the processor could probably be a little bit faster. Um, the the RAM prob, prob, probably be a little bit more. Yeah. Um, but other than that, um, it was easy to set up. It automatically maps the drives without you doing anything. It gives them, um, you know, alphabetical Oh yeah. yeah, nice, nice, nice. So, so pictures, documents. You can create drives. You can you can share drives with just certain people. Oh, for yeah, example. Good. Yep. And they can just drop stuff in there, and they won't see and they won't see anything else. Yeah, you, know, right. you can give them. Yeah, and, and, and what's the um, price of one of those retail? Oh, mate, you don't want to ask. <laughs> well, I'm sure we can all find out on the internet. <laughs> yeah, just, just just Google it. <laughs> It can't be spoken. Whatever you see, times it by two. That's what I'm up for. <laughs> it just can't be spoken. It's words that can't be spoken. All right, uh, that's about it. Will you you finished up there? Yeah, pretty much. All right. Well, that's about it. We're going to call it a night and a show. So thanks everyone. And uh, you can find you can find us on the emails, Glenn, Will, or Eric at aussietechheads.com.au. You can find me on the Twitter at Aussie Tech Heads. And don't forget, ask the head at ask the head. And Eric, where can we find you on the uh, Twitters? You can find me uh, Oknaf Tech. <laughs> oh, you changed your name again. It's Oknaf Tech. All right, right. And is this your news Twitter or is this your personal Twitter? Uh, is this... this is, I don't know, it's just a joke Twitter, really. I don't really use it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's follow that one then. You can find me Net Channel 2 or at Eric Franco or at Oknaf Tech. <laughs> And Will, where can we find you? Uh, just Twitter at Mr. Tomkinson, M R T O M K O N S O N, or uh, Aussie TBT when I remember. <laughs> <laughs> or you can go to uh, Talkback Tech right. and find it. Yeah. And also, don't forget, new Android show. We just released our, well, I'm about to put up the beta episode of that. So that's on Tuesday nights after Talkback Tech, live at thesecrab.com from 7 o'clock. Good stuff. All right, everyone. Thank you, Lounge at Lounge Lizards out there, live at thesecrethub.com. Thanks for sticking around. And thanks you to you for downloading. So we'll see you all next week for another great episode of Aussie Tech Heads. So until then, it's bye for now. See you guys. See you.